So something happened on Thursday the 10th. Um, I was walking to lunch and I uh, was walking down some stairs and it was raining pretty hard and I fell. And as a result, um, I ended up getting a pretty good gash in my head. So I thought what I might do for the purpose of uh, the sketch is to remove the gash from my head. I thought that might be fun to do. So I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, image which I put into downloads. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna open this image. And sometimes you might get this it says the uh Embedded color profile is different than the default in the GIMP. I always convert it because I want to make sure that it's working right for the GIMP. Hey, so there's me. I'm going to take this. First thing I'm going to do is just take this uh, image and center it a bit because I didn't take a very good, uh, very good shot at the time. I was just trying to take a picture of my, of my gashed head. And um, I'm going to use the crop tool right here. It looks like a little X-Acto knife to crop down just to my head. And um, if I hit return, it automatically crops. I'm going to go to view and go to zoom and say fit image in window. And there it is. So just going to move this back over here a bit. And so you can see, pretty pretty bad gash. I'm going to put my mouse away now and um, grab my Wacom tablet. And this is going to be all clone work. So I'm going to pick the clone tool. You can see I have the settings uh, tab up here and I have a round brush. You can see it's fairly large. I'm going to take the scale down just a bit so it's a little bit smaller so that I can have more control over exactly what I'm doing. Say probably like 2.7. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to take the opacity down because I want to do this sort of in layers. I don't want to do it with full opacity. I want to do it in layers. Um, now that the settings are set for that, I'm actually going to go bit to my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in right on the problematic part of the image. Go back to my move tool. And now go back to my clone tool. Like that. So the key to cloning always always the key to cloning is to select something in the image that looks exactly like what you want to place wherever you put the clone tool so for example this area that's bright red because of this is where I hit my head I'm going to grab this part of my head that's nice and clean in order to replace this because it, it will this area of my head would normally look like this from this angle and this lighting. So you can see there's a little, maybe you can see, there is a little uh, uh, circle with a line through it, which is universal for not allowed, right? Smoking not allowed, for example. And what that's saying is that I have not picked an area to clone yet. So I'm going to hold down control, and you can see that the icon changes whenever I hold down control. And when I click down, it gives me a little... Uh, crosshairs. That crosshairs tells me that I'm ready to start cloning. And so I start to sort of clean those areas up 
just by sort of painting them away. And I'm going to change my clone position by holding down control again and pressing above there. You can see that I'm just gently, with low opacity, 50% opacity, removing that part of my head that was destroyed today. I'm going to do a control Z because I didn't like that brush mark right there. And the other interesting thing is that once you, I just set my clone again, once you have an area changed, you can use that area for cloning too. Right? So if I wanted to go up here and start to paint that out, that's fine. But now that this whole area here is cloned, I can use that area to clone too. There it is. I'm going to use this area of my hair over here to gently clean that up. With cloning, I often find myself grabbing lots of different places. <clears throat> you can see there I made a little mistake because I dragged the clone down to where my glasses are. I don't want that, so I undo that quickly. I'm going to grab this area here and add some of that. And because I have such a low opacity, I can stroke a couple times before it really looks like it's full opacity. So it looks like I'm a little splotchy in my skin, but it doesn't look as though I just uh, fell down some stairs, which is ex exactly what I did. I fell down some stairs. While I'm here, I can actually sort of uh, clean up my hair too a little bit. If I think that there is not enough detail, like if that brush is too big, I can go to my brushes tab here. And I can choose a different brush something like this nice uh, soft brush here and it looks like I just crashed no. um, what happened there strangely is that it thought that I was trying to move the brushes palette so I'll just put it back where it belongs. We'll wait a second for it to get back. Take your time, little brushes palette. Yeah, there it is. So I go ahead and select a nice soft brush, go back to my tools where I can take the scale down because that brush is way too big and go back to work just grabbing a portion of the image painting it in taking the edge of my hair here and let's go ahead and zoom out if I go to view for example and do a zoom fit to window it looks like I never had any problem isn't that beautiful? If I really wanted to, I could shave my face. You know, I could take this portion of my face and shave it. But I'm not too concerned about that, really. I'm going to take my move tool because it looks like I have some transparency on the side here that I don't want. And um, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. If I wanted to, I could also use this uh, smudge tool and sort of smudge some of these colors together, make my skin look less blotchy than it is. It doesn't bother me, it's just the way it is, but see how nicely that just sort of smoothed everything out? So I'm going to file, save as, because I want to keep my original photo, and I'm going to save it in my 365 sketches, 2011 and this is going to be for the 11th. I'm going to change it to XCF. 
changing it to XCF because that's native GIMP file format and the native GIMP file format holds on to things like layering and other settings that um, I want to hold on to. So I'll say save and I always 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 save a copy in PNG format in the same place because PNG is more readily viewable by everybody whereas XCF is fairly specialized. So I'll say save and whenever you export to another file format it says your image should be exported before you save it as PNG because uh, PNG loses all the things that XCF holds on to. I don't care because I just saved the XCF so I say export you get this nice dialog for PNG allowing you to make decisions about the PNG I'm going to just go ahead and save because I like the defaults and we're done. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you had fun.